If you were to close your eyes and picture the perfect retirement spot, let's say money was no object, where do you see yourself? Uh, is it on maybe a Caribbean beach somewhere, sipping a, sipping a fruity cocktail, laying underneath a palm tree? Well, my friends, that is what I envisioned for myself in retirement. And at 45, I sort of inadvertently retired to the Virgin Islands, but it only lasted for three years because I made some of the big planning mistakes that I talk a lot about on this channel. So today, I am going to use myself as the example of what not to do when planning for retirement. I'm going to tell you what happened and why I only lasted three years living on a Caribbean island. Shut up and sit down. Just in case you're new here, my name is Jeff. This is the Retirement Mentality Channel. This is a place where I want to change your mentality about retirement. I talk a lot about investing in real estate, creating passive income. Um, I talk about my house I bought in Puerto Rico. It's an Airbnb. I have some Airbnbs here in Florida. So we talk about um, basically figuring out what you want your life to look like in retirement and then figuring out how to fund that lifestyle because that's where we all go wrong. And I'm going to tell you how I did it here today. I'm going to give you, I guess, first a little bit of backstory on myself so that before the uh, haters in the comments start saying, well, it must be nice to be a trustafarian, or if I had a job making $250,000 a year, I could retire on an island too. Because that wasn't the case for me. My wife was a school teacher. Uh, I was selling real estate. I never just really crushed it out of the park making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I just did sort of, okay, I probably made between... 60 and a hundred thousand dollars every year. My wife was making under under 50. So a combined income under 150 Easily so a lot of people can do what we did and the way that we actually were able to get to this early retirement Was we bought one rental property every year until we had enough rental income to pay for our living expenses plus a little bit extra so that we felt like we had some padding there that we didn't have to work anymore and we could do Crazy fun things like moving to the Caribbean. I even went broke once along the way in 2008 when the market crashed. I lost everything. The bank foreclosed on three properties on me and I had to start over at 38. So then it took me about seven years to get back to where I could actually retire. So the mistake that I made was um, retiring to the Caribbean island. I thought that was just the retirement goal. I didn't think what I wanted my lifestyle to look like once I got there. So I didn't, I didn't know what the day to day was going to look like. So I thought that just being on the island was going to be enough. And one of the things I stress on this channel is if you don't know what your retirement life looks like, you can't figure out how much it's going to cost. So by not knowing what, I, how I was going to fill my days, I didn't know you know, I ended up, I went sailing once a week and I played pickleball once a week. And those things, like pickleball doesn't cost you money, but sailing costs some money and going fishing costs money. And I ended up uh, meeting some friends that we would go out to lunch all the time and going out for drinks. All those things were very expensive on the Caribbean island. And my wife was at work. She was still working. She, we moved there for her to have a job. So she wasn't home all day. And I didn't, I didn't envision... I incorrectly didn't envision what my life looked like while she was at work. I would go sit on the beach all day, especially when we first moved there, and I didn't know anybody. And boy, I got bored pretty quick just sitting on a beautiful beach every day, believe it or not. Uh, it's not enough to fill your days. So you find out, you start finding new things to do, and most of those things end up winding up costing you money. So by not, so the mistake I made was not knowing what I wanted my life to look like. And because of that fact, inevitably, you can't figure out what that lifestyle cost. And it wasn't, that's not really what was the detriment of what caused us to have to leave the island and move back here to Florida to this beautiful place. This is the place where I left to go to Florida. So I wasn't doing too bad to begin with. The truth is, all the planning on the world, I, will, I still would have ended up right back here where I am now. But you have to learn also, even with all the planning in the world, you have to learn to be able to be flexible in life and retirement with your finances. You know, after we moved to the Caribbean, uh, you know, we were living off of our rental income from our properties here in Florida. And then COVID hit and we had two long term rentals. One of them, one of our long term renters, what, him and his girlfriend were both waiters and waitresses. And the other one, the girl worked for a property management company for vacation rentals. So I was like, 
they're not paying rent anymore. They don't, they're not going to have any income. And then we had three vacation rentals and the world shut down. I was like, they're not making any money. So all of a sudden I went from thinking I was pretty much set and I could go live anywhere on the planet and do what I call recreational employment and live off of my rental income. And all of a sudden I had $7,000 of mortgages with the fear that no money was coming in. And on top of that, the wife's salary was about 50,000 pre-tax and our rent on our tiny little one bedroom condo in the Caribbean was almost $30,000. So not to mention super crazy expensive electricity and food and gas and everything else. So, you know, some things you just can't plan for. And those are the things that, uh, prevent people from retiring early or retiring at all, or just getting into the one more year syndrome. Well, what if, what if we just work one more year and we get an extra 50,000 in this account? Or what if we work one more year and we buy one more property? So it's the what ifs that really prevent people from retiring. And the lesson I think I want to want you to take from this is that, you know, the what ifs that are so scary, they're going to happen. They're going to come along. And the good thing is, is you're not going to go broke overnight. You know, even if all of my rental properties would have went to zero and I had $7,000 worth of mortgages, well, we, we had $50,000 in an emergency fund. It's not going to last forever, but we could have broke our lease, moved back to Florida, got new jobs. So I could have gotten a real job again and we could have stopped the bleeding and we could have survived and been okay until the world got back to normal. So you can't be so afraid of the what ifs and the, you know, what if aliens land? Every time my wife is kind of a worrier and every time she says, well, what if these people don't pay rent? What if nobody goes on vacation? And I always say, well, what if aliens land? You can't control all those things. You just have to have buffers in place to get you through the hard times and, you know, trip wires that can let you know when you get to a certain level of funds, you got to just have bumpers and things in place so that you know when it's time for a drastic change. And when it comes to making those decisions, like I always try to, this is how I make all the decisions. It's like kind of twofold. Like one, would we regret this more if we did it or if we didn't do it? And we decided we regret more not moving to the Virgin Islands. I'm wondering what life could have been like then if we moved there and we had to move back because here it is, I moved back. Life's, life's, life's still not, not too bad. And the other way I look at it is if if a decision is like a big steel door that once you go through it, it closes behind you and it never opens again, or is it a revolving door? For instance, if you move to the Virgin Islands, can you move back to Florida if it doesn't work out? Or if you sell your dream house before you go and it doesn't work out, that's a steel door. It closed. I couldn't have bought this house. Well, what if somebody trashes this house while well, we're gone for three years? Well, that's sort of a revolving door thing and we could fix the house. It might cost me more money and be a pain in the ass, but it's not undoable. So that's how we look at these decisions. So you got to be flexible. You got to do as much planning as you can, but sometimes you got to just not be afraid to take the leap and go for the life that you. So I'm running out of sunlight. I'm also running out of a beer since it's an evening video. I thought I'd have a beer while I shared these thoughts with you guys today. If you like this video, go watch some of these early retirement mistakes that you could avoid by watching this video over here. And if you like this message, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let me know if you have any thoughts on this. If you um, have anything you've thought of on how to uh, avoid the mistakes that prevent you from retiring early or retiring at all or having one more year syndrome, leave me your thoughts down below. And thanks for watching. Thank you.